morning, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us in this panel discussion of future of hiring. And thank you so much for chiming in in GitHub Constellation. Today, like I said, we're talking about future of hiring. And I have esteemed panelists with me, Abhimanyu Saxena, co-founder of Interbit and Scalar, dedicated to the mission of making 1 million software developers in India for best in the world. Tane Pratav, founder and CTO in WACT Metaversity. He is boss with Microsoft, working on Microsoft team. He is master of web development and crazy about web performance, security, and scale. And last but not the least, Ethel Ranganathan from the COP world joining us. He's head of India engineering at Stripe. He's also been in his previous stints with Amazon, Facebook, where he's helped with innovative software development. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. To introduce myself, I'm Divya Vaishnavi. I'm Director of Product for GitHub Education and really, really excited to talk about hiring and how we help students move from learnability to employability. Abhimanyu, I'll start with you. Um, tell us a little from your journey, your key learnings, and how is hiring changing in the world and specifically in India? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Divya, uh, for first, of course, inviting all of us to this panel. And uh, definitely, it's a great topic to talk about that, how the world of hiring, specifically in technology, is very rapidly evolving. I'll talk about my journey. I started being uh, professionally coding for close to 14 years now. Uh, before starting Interviewbit and Scalar, uh, had been a software engineer myself, trying hard to you know build a high performance team. Uh, and one thing that we realized was that despite the signaling mechanism that have exist for the centuries, if not millennia, which is that generally we would look at uh, the pedigree of the individual, what kind of universities one have gone to, what kind of degrees someone have done. And unfortunately, over time, that has become such a high noise channel that you would, I'm sure that all the, you know, people who have taken technical interviews on this panel as well that would agree that often there might, they might have seen times where you would have done interviews of 100 folks who all seem great on paper, but when you interview them, you, you realize that, you know, the person doesn't have the skills that the industry need, that your team need, right? Uh, and hence, very quickly in last, at least in last full decade, and now I think we are at the inflection point where the hiring is very quickly shifting from signaling or credentials to skills. Uh, proof of work, what you can build, what you can showcase is what matters. Nothing else matters. One proof point there is that if we look at some of the best companies across the world, be it Tesla, be it Facebook, be it Microsoft, be it Google, almost all of the companies are comfortable that if you meet their hiring bar, uh, particularly in the tech teams, you would not be turned down even if you don't have a degree. Forget about a degree in a particular field or not. Even if you don't have a degree, they would not turn you down. Right? And that is definitely a very big shift. Probably if we talk about our parents' generation, it would be hard for them to believe that you can get a high paying, high performance job while you do not even have a degree. So I think, yeah, in my journey in last 10, 15 years, since I have been, you know, of course, as an engineer in giving interviews, then turning around the table, taking interviews, then building a company, having hired so many people, that's one of the biggest changes that I see in the last decade that we have come across. Wow, awesome. So proof of work and skills more important than actual degrees. Tane, over to you. Can you share a little bit about your journey and what do you see as the big trend in hiring today? Yeah, thank you, Divya. Uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting us and inviting this amazing panel to talk to uh, something about something which is very, very near to my heart, right? Personal story is that didn't graduate from a top tier college and worked at Microsoft and and been teaching and coaching a lot of students to work in unicorns across India, right? So, so even from a personal anecdote perspective, it does not matter anymore. It it did few years back, but it does not anymore. As long as you have what what uh, Abhimanyu very rightly said, proof of work, right? Uh, in January, first January two thousand twenty one, I tweeted about this that be so good that people start valuing your craft over your credentials, 
right? So that that has stuck with me for the craft over credentials is because we don't know the credentials of the best of the best artists in the world, right? They see people often confuse. degree with license degree and license are two different things there are license practices wherein you need to have a license to practice that like law like uh, like medicine right and then there's pilot license and then there is degree degree at least for computer science or anything related to that is not required we are seeing that even in other places you know you, uh, i mean in businesses in operations and things like that in writing in journalism you don't need degree so these places where you don't have a license requirement you don't even need to go to college today right that's a very tough stance to say but yes if if you do not have the money you do not have the resources do not have the time to to pursue a college there are many students who who basically dropped out because you know covid was a tough time they were not going to colleges parents were losing jobs uh, college fees are high and they reached out and they said you know bhaiya can't can't go to college what to do Uh, can you pay fees for us i said you know we can't pay the fee for you but can ensure you that you give 6 months time uh, your honest time for 6 months do xyz create proof of work and that's it that's all you need to do to get a job and it has been a successful model across the uh, whole i think computer science uh, community at, at least before i go to atri um do you mind sharing the numbers of how many students with using this proof of work that you've been able to help place in unicorns yeah so direct number is 100 100 students we placed so i basically uh, in 2022 a lot of people you know this was a public bet i i shaved my head and i put a photo on twitter and saying i'm going to place students while working at microsoft and i'll not grow my hair unless and so all my videos from that time and all my photos for one year is without hair and people were like bhaiya baal jhad rahe hai kya aapke I'm like dude come on genetics ko aise nahi bolna chahiye so <laughs> so that happened and then then 100 100 folks got placed directly but a lot of students after doing all of this they applied to angel.co and other places and startups today at least i can tell you whether it's a unicorn or a seed stage startup they do not care about the degree at all they do not even care about you know whether you are from uh, from patna or from or from surat or where which city you are from which which culture you are from some people even don't care about the quality of your communication we we talk so much about communication when we talk about communication we talk about english and writing right but communication is more than that it's about ki apni bhavnaye vyakt kar pa rahe hain ki nahi can you can you say what you want to say right and a lot of students were good at that bad at english but even they got a really real jobs like companies like colon have hired some of the students who are not great at english but they said don't worry we'll coach you for that so i think i think there's no bar right now the only bar is your craft and nothing else okay awesome thank you um atre coming to you and you're kind of on the other side of table kind of with me uh tell us about from the corporate world um and say with stripe as well which is a unicorn like what are you seeing what is changing in terms of hiring yeah I'll maybe start with a personal anecdote here in this case because i spent a lot of my time in fact all of my professional career in bay area in in california where i worked for you know facebook and amazon of the world and you get to kind of sample some of the best talent that's available um actually in the world i would say because you know when you're really good in any part of the world beria has a very cosmopolitan culture where it's very inviting for immigrants so you see a lot of people from all parts of the world and they're possibly the best in their country kind of come into the beria and you you get to work with them you get to interview them you get to uh, interact with them and then i've had that level of uh, i would say exposure um, and i was kind of very used to that so when i decided to kind of move back to india one of the first kind of like trepidations if you will that i had from a professional perspective was how was the quality of talent going to be in india right i mean i've never worked here when i left it was you know largely service oriented industries and so when now that we're coming here as a product company there was obviously some amount of fear of what are we going to find and i'm extremely happy to report back that we've been blown out of the water in terms of expectations of uh if whatever expectations we came with so we have actually gone as far as to say that 
you know, Stripe came to India for the market. The digital payment market here is exploding. We're still very interested in the market, but we're staying for the talent. Um, the talent has been phenomenal. Um, the leadership in, um, you know, especially in the tech field has been extremely good. I would say like, um, you know, on par, if not better than the Bay Area. And just to kind of add to what both Tanay and Abhi said here, um, I will say that there is a unique uh, differentiator, if you will, that Indian talent actually brings, which, you know, having come from a different kind of cultural background, especially from a professional perspective to here, I'm able to kind of like identify that, which is just growth mentality, right? All of India is still growing. All of India, the demographically is very young and there's a lot of growth that the country itself is kind of going through. All the com co companies here are growing extremely fast. And so when you get talent into uh, a, a company like Stripe, the difference we see that is that the Indian talent come in with, a, with this growth mentality. They're a humble. Um, so they, you know, when you, when you want to grow, you need to kind of approach it with a level of humility where you say, you know, give me feedback, like help me understand where my gaps are and I want to kind of grow. And there's a certain degree of, you know, wanting to emulate the best that they see in their field. Um, so I completely agree with the sentiment that, we, that has been expressed so far, which is your craft matters. The, the second part of it that matters is your attitude and how you approach work. Uh, and this is where I feel like the talent here in India is, is, is very, you know, far superior. That's the most I would say that we have. And we should think about it, recognize it, um, and foster it. Um, I'll kind of like end by saying that I've worked in, you know, the cloud industry for a really long time where we solved really hard problems. The cool thing about the cloud is you just need to solve them once, right? And everybody else can build on top of it. Now we're approaching this era where, um, you know, knowing what to build is more important than, you know, figuring out how to build it uh, because, you know, all industries are going up the value chain. It, you're basically raising the abstraction continuously. Um, so as, you know, students, um, you know, especially like as you think about things like contributing to our GitHub repositories and things like that, you know, getting into that product sense for knowing what it is that you can kind of contribute to this community that would be a value add to it is just as important. It would be super uh, useful to kind of think about that. Lastly, I'll end by saying people skills. Like we are, I, I found that Indian talent like has like extremely good people skills um, where it's very like, you know, camaraderie, uh, great communication. Exactly. I'll kind of like echo what Tanai said is being able to express what you want to express. Uh, in a succinct way. And I think all of this is coming together really well. So Stripe, you know, came here for the market, staying for the talent, and we're, I'm actually super glad that we're here. We're now using the local talent to actually solve global problems. So in a way, there's a lot of attraction of talent that's happening here to up-level it to the global stage. Wow, awesome. So we spoke about skill set, craft, the attitude. The other, fab, like for GitHub especially, our community fabric or GitHub as the social coding platform is really, really important. And at GitHub Education as well, we do a lot of work for building community. What are your viewpoints about how community helps, especially the student uh, category, student users in advancing in their career stages or even from learning to employability? Any of you who wants to go first? I have been a big, uh, you know, community learning champion. So maybe I will steal the mic from everyone yes. else. To begin with. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So actually I would start with, uh, you know, maybe a question that when we talk about, and of course, uh, no doubt to the fact that in India and even globally, we have had these, you know, uh, top Ivy Leagues, you know, the MIT, the Stanford, the Harvard or the IITs, et cetera. And there's no doubt that, of course, the alumni uh, graduating from there have done great in careers, no denying that, right? They have produced very high quality tech talent. But why? If I ask you why, if you drill into that, did they have access to better books? Did they have access to better content? Absolutely not. Everyone have had access to the same books. Did they have 10x or 100x better professors? While, yes, maybe they might have had slightly better professors, but I don't think even in the bestest university, if I talk about, let's say, 
a university in say in a small town in india versus even in a university because i have been to a decently famous university as well i can attest while the professors are great nothing not taking anything away from them but the gap is not 10x or 100x the gap that we see in the outcomes right now content is same people teaching them is same what is different fundamentally what is different in best colleges which have been producing very high quality talent is the community the community that exists inside these campuses you know the harvard or the stanford that is what biggest catalyst is now what does community do uh, now if we try to break it down uh, what exactly are the inputs that that drive this there are few parameters and actually here let me also talk about one anecdote so back in 2018 uh, one of the fastest growing uh, you know mobility company in india of course i will not put the name uh, they worked with us to hire their fresh engineering talent in india they were just setting up their office in india and they worked with us to set up their india tech center and we kind of told them that why do you want to maybe visit five or 10 engineering campuses that limits your reach why not do a pan india you know uh, coding test people who perform well you can interview them eventually they had to hire 40 fresh college grads they 10 out of them now these people who were hired at a salary of 35 lakhs lpa right after college and this is 2018 4 5 years back came from very small towns colleges whose name i had never heard before uh and that was actually revealing for us like these folks are coming from colleges where probably no one ever got in the history of college ever got an offer paying them more than 5 lakhs how did that happen of course the content is accessible to everyone right so me and my other uh, co-founder of the company and shuman we sat down we got on a one hour call with each of them to understand that what was different about you what was common amongst almost all of them was access to some form of mentorship they would say that you know uh, my elder cousin she works for google uh, she asked me to start preparing on interview bed and she keeps helping me whenever i get stuck some would would say that you know one of friend of my elder brother who was his college friend went to iid bombay and he has been coaching me he has been guiding me. right our oh, mentorship at such early age mentorship is such a big lever right second is more often or not they would have a group of 2 3 4 friends who have all succeeded together the success never comes as an individual instance it's a group which does together well, right now when we look at you know these the best colleges ivy leagues or or you know the top universities those dynamics are unintentionally created there they have access to very high quality mentorship either in form of peers or their seniors who have who are already doing big things that sets a right goal for them if my if the person right next to me is winning acm icpc world finals i do not feel that i can't do it if if the guy living right next to me can do it i can also it becomes it. approachable and reachable right? yes and if i am stuck on something i can just knock the door and you know move on uh, if i want to get some questions answered it's accessible within few seconds that is what community does now in today's world where you know thanks to geo everyone across the world has access to very high speed internet now this community dynamics which earlier for centuries existed in very small concentrated geographical places if you are in the campus of triple it hyderabad only then you can have access to this community if you are in the campus of stanford only then you can have access to this community fortunately we are living in a world where we can be you know tanay is building metaversity right with metaverse or you know like of course that is the very advanced version of that but in one way or other even when i am in a discord server even when i am on a slack channel talking to people i am in metaverse right, right. i can be surrounded or even when i am collaborating with people on github i am in a metaverse right i can build a community around me irrespective of whatever my geographical location can be i can connect with like minded people from across the world uh, and hence what i strongly believe is that future of higher education will be entirely virtual these high intensity high caliber environments or campuses will be created virtually they will be on the internet and this power of community in learning is going to be you know like what was accessible to probably few hundred people in the stanford campus earlier that would be probably available to everyone yeah awesome thank you for reinforcing that about community tane or atria anything you would want to add more to it i know we all understand community really helps foster Uh, this, but any or then any tips on um, 
yeah i think i should have taken abhimanyu for my vc pitch i he has done a better job than i i did so that's the exact, exact same thing which we were saying not not in a very uh, nice way which abhimanyu said is that you know everybody has access to content today the courseras and the uh, and the and the uh, edexes of the world have democratized content you know even like as abhimanyu said now you have the best professors also on your fingertips but even then the needle is not moving you know you would have thought that after mit ocw coursera edx people everybody would be a great engineer or a, or a great uh, businessman or things like that but it didn't happen so what is missing and that's where you know we we said the community is an is a special ingredient without which you know growth doesn't happen just content alone doesn't work it's a mixture of content community and accountability which comes through mentorship through exams through challenges through assignments when these three come together then the magic of education happens and then you see a different kind of growth trajectory than anywhere else so i think community is a very very important piece it's it's one of the most important pieces which we are missing from past 10 years but thanks to thanks to the likes of discord slack even twitter i feel and and some places linkedin youtube comments and what not we are getting some sense of community uh, now and you, the future you which, can't forget which i'm building the words is yes i'm sorry <laughs> github as well no, I, i think github has done a great job it's just that students don't realize it until they are like in a good job and then they start using it for open source and and things like that right uh, github has produce amazing amazing software all remote even before we went remote github went remote right and and we have been doing so the top most companies uh, microsoft teams and everything is working on react which is done on github and everywhere the more we understand and and everyone who's listening find your tribe is what i keep telling everywhere you know find your community so that you can also have that catalyst towards growth that's that's all atre anything you want to Actually, I'll flip this around actually and talk about it from like what happens with community within uh, a workplace right software development is a team sport it's not an individual game right you need to know how to work with people and you need to have done that before you need to have built that muscle before you came in and people who come in with that muscle you have a very steep trajectory of growth right uh, essentially you know what you can do with your two hands on your keyboard is very limited you cannot vertically scale yourself only to some extent it's exactly like distributed systems the more you can kind of horizontally scale influence right decompose a problem delegate and converge all of those various threads into a point of success that's when you create magic with software and it all happens within a community and through building a community and acting responsibly within a community so like i i i think that's where i think just to like again plug github uh, again but it's for me before i went into a larger you know corporation it's like communities like that that provided the ability to collaborate multiple people very large number of people collaborating on a single goal um many times that can be very challenging to navigate um the other example i'll give is you know you could go and you think you're a hot shot software engineer you write up what you think is a beautiful piece of code and you send in a pull request and the and and this large community comes back with almost a rewrite like a set of suggestions you learn from that and that you know being able to deal with that and learn from it and uh, and up level yourself continuously it all happens within a community and i'm i'm very glad that there are such opportunities available outside of large corporations that help you exercise that muscle so when you get in you are in this kind of really steep trajectory within you know corporations like uh facebook stripe and, and and many more like that i think i come to you with the next question as well uh tane in some ways talked about the inclusion like the soft skills or again the craft or the skill set not having a college degree is also uh, in many ways an inclusion in the industry what are you seeing in the corporate world and then i'll open it to others but i wanted to hear from you first yeah i i will reflect on my entire experience here this is not specific to stripe i think there is definitely still a bias in the in the you know top corporate world for you know resumes of a certain type um where i've seen that be completely broken um is when i'll give you one anecdote of course without naming this person who kind of dropped out of a really good university in their third year right 
tried to do something of their own. And this is kind of going back to some of the statements that were made in the session around proving your work. If you don't have a degree, you haven't come in from the top universities, you have to have some way in which you can prove that you are able to compete at, the, at that level, right? And so this person, what they did was they just started a company, right? They, they thought they had a really good idea. They executed really well on it. The company didn't pan out. That's okay, right? The fact that they demonstrated the ability work, yeah. to write, like think backwards from a customer, like identify a problem that was useful enough to solve and get enough people together, influence them to work on this problem and produce something that was tangible, right? While that may not have had business success, those set of skills are really what any corporation is looking for, right? And this person kind of came into Facebook and has seen some of the steepest uh, career growth that I have seen in my entire like 20 years of working in the industry. Uh, so that's just a testament to the fact that there is a level of inclusion that will happen as far as you're able to bring that proof uh, of, of the pudding to the table, right? Uh, but I will also caveat this by saying that in the cream of the kind of corporate industry, there is still that level of bias for schools and, and things like that, especially when you look for internships, which we are hoping to actively break. Um, you know, there's a, a level of uh, conscious, uh, you know, um, counter bias that we're bringing to the table. Um, hopefully that will kind of drive more inclusivity in all regards of diversity here. Yeah, we, we're breaking that as well at GitHub with like the externship programs or internship programs and, and breaking that barrier of proof uh, of work or skill sets than more of a college degree. Abhimanyu Tane, anything you want to add there? I'm sure Scalar has some examples or experiments that you can share with us. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, as Atreya mentioned, and actually I think we have to admit that as humans uh, and even as organizations, we always have inherent biases. Uh, first step to I think avoid them is admitting that there's always a possibility that we can develop biases. Now biases often get even more pronounced when there is any ecosystem which already is heavier towards one kind of group, right? Now this could be gender bias, this could be background bias, this could be, you know, like this could be anything. We recently did one very interesting experiment that we called Scalar Fair Play. What we did was that we partnered with about 50 different companies across different segments, all the way from young startups, let's say scaled up startups, which might be unicorns, et cetera, pre-IPO, or some, you know, recently IPO'd uh, successful startups of India, even some, you know, public large multinational companies. Our proposition to them was following. We would understand your entire recruitment process. We would understand what kind of skills you value and at what depth you evaluate your candidates on. We will invest in running that entire process on a bunch of candidates. Only people who are able to clear that bar taken by very capable professionals as interviewers in a strict uh, proctored environment. Hence, we ensure that there is no scope of anyone, you know, kind of sliding in who is not capable. And we will kind of give them to you. You for interviews, of course, you should evaluate them once again as per your standards. Now, while we would do all this hard work for you without charging you anything, what we are looking for in, in return, what we were looking for in return is that you would take their interviews without having looked at their past background. Did they have a degree or not? Which college did they go to? What kind of degree did they have? Black what box interviews. They might have? Black box interview. What their ethnicity is? What their, maybe sometimes, of course, I think gender in interviews is pretty hard. Uh, I wish there was some way to do that as well. Uh, but hide as many past, uh, you know, profiling data as possible. Do the interviews only and only on the base of skills. And let us know who are the people you would want to hire, who are the people you would not want to hire. Right. Once you have made that decision, we will reveal who the person was, where did the person come from. Uh, now, fantastically, just in a month, there were actually, after our last chat, I let, looked at data once again, just in one month, about 50 people got hired by some of the, you know, most uh, sought after tech companies just in India. And when we look at the segmentation of the data, that what kind of people were, then again, the biases are very clearly visible. Uh, that, you know, if you look at the other pipeline, 
of you know number of offers made and how is the distribution across let's say category of colleges uh, degree which kind of degrees the people have which companies do people come from there is a very clear data that there are biases at play on both the sides we might be hiring someone who doesn't really fit the bar just because the person you know we have a positive bias for the person or other way around that we might be saying no to a person just because we have a negative bias for the person uh, so hence so are you an experiment to prove as well that uh, inclusion is like you're seeing that with the industry as well this is this is awesome yeah so then anything you want to add there or abhi money you tried to update and you were adding something else no 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 so, yeah what is what is that then anything yeah no so so we did this uh, similar kind of experiment before starting the whole invact uh, meta mba program is we asked a lot of mba folks who generally hire is that if i don't tell you which college this kid is from and i give you a very good interview and how to determine who is from a you know better college and i think that's the problem right and and abhiman you talked about bias bias is about when you get less signals your brain wants to quickly take a decision based on the signal strongest signal you have and degree has or or the college name has been the strongest signal now what you say is hey i'm removing the strongest signal or instead of the strongest signal i'm giving you 20 different signals signal points for you to look at and then see whether you know this with these signals with this data can you make a right decision or not so i think inclusion is not a one person problem right it's not just just the company should be more inclusive they should give more because you should think about a company when you post a job offer there like thousands and 10000 of people applying on the same job and i am being an entrepreneur now i understand you have to also run a business apart from doing all of this so then how do you do this the way to do it is as an applicant you increase the number of signals like github repository today and having an active github a uh, con- contribution is a good signal gsoc has become a good signal you know lead code and other other such platforms have become good signal making your own projects have become good signal so you have to give signals to the hiring manager to help that person who poor fellow what will he do otherwise or she do uh, how will how will they do 10000 uh, applications um, filtering so i think we have to think from the other perspective i think this at microsoft we talk about empathy a lot and empathy has to be for the other 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 party as well and then only we can find the bias in in our industry now i love how you put it we're almost close to time the last question that i wanted to bring to all of you you've all had a steamed journey in the tech industry if you had to go back and tell your 18 20 year old self what would be one big advice you'll you'll tell him tell do you want to go first I have a very anti advice I I'm I'm stopping myself like don't say this don't say this on camera and, uh, it's okay so but you please have given you, you it please. to yourself uh, I'm happy that you shared it with others yeah see I, I would have given it to myself even 10 years back is that uh, you know yeah so if I have to give a feed a, a advice to me I would say you know keep working hard uh, when I joined my first company it was a great great package and i and i thought i should have work life balance early in my life and then my manager pulled me once and said you know tane everyone's smart and if you want to rise the ranks hard work is what will what will differentiate you from everyone else now there are enough people on internet who tell you that you know it, if you are talented you should work on or your own terms and all and i personally do not agree with this i think i think there's a time till which you should work really really hard learn as much as you can and then think about work life balance and all the other things because you know people who are telling this on the internet they they have reached their by working a lot of lot extra hours than than this is so so take take every piece of advice with some pinch of salt on internet especially and this one as well thank you tane to continue from where tane left uh, you know uh, while i 100% agree and uh, important point is that a snippet visible on internet has a lot more context to it of that individual's journey which generally gets lost so do not you know just follow blindly uh, i totally agree with that one more thing that i would add is that uh, while i think i was lucky enough to you know have the right mentors and put me in the right direction at the right time but even till date i see a lot of you know young folks and students making that mistake one is that think long term 
your career uh, you know like uh, when we are talking to mostly i think engineers there 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 is a greedy algorithm and there's a dynamic programming approach right where you do not just pick whatever is immediately giving you value but you think little more long term that what choices today are going to give you lot more growth in say you know your career is a 30 40 year old uh, you know journey uh, so think long term focus on the fundamental skills uh, in your career you should never have fear of missing out you know unlike the stock market where often people are driven by fomo uh, you know and i see this a lot that you know there are a bunch of new stuff floating around and people are jumping around uh, instead of digging 100 wells uh, driven by fomo focus on the fundamentals build your fundamental skills really really well learn how to learn and then it's a long journey you know you will do great uh, do not be too worried about if you know do not be in the rat race that someone else did 10% more than me so i have to just run for that uh, focus on building fundamental skills think long term it's a it's a marathon it's not a sprint awesome i love that phrase learn to learn yeah. if you what advice would you give your 18 20 year old self Well, I'd continue a lot of the threads that have already been talked about here. The one thing I think I would definitely do differently, especially in the early part of my career, as Tanay mentioned, where I was working really hard, is to also take a moment to enjoy what you're doing. Because what I was doing was actually quite amazing. When I look back, I miss those dates when I could just spend eight hours just on my keyboard writing code. Uh, I am running from meetings to meetings now, and I look back at that time and go like. wow those were some really like you know you could be in flow right like the state of flow that they say like that musicians get into in their riffing like you can actually enjoy your work when you kind of take a step back uh and think about more of the long term of what you're actually trying to achieve and then get into it so take time to enjoy your work of course work hard but have that be a more fruitful long term journey and don't burn out uh that would be the definitely one advice that should be applicable to everybody at this point awesome um i would also add one thing and i say this all for the student or female community as well be really self confident too because i think that's something uh somewhere i feel and maybe it's a bias like we we are a little less confident usually so be be more self confident uh, just believe you're awesome and then everything else with your learn to learn you're working hard and enjoying as well the rest will all 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 follow it any last words that you want to share before we end this awesome session i just think this we should do this more this was a great session and thank you for everyone who joined in and and putting this together we should definitely do this more yeah absolutely high five to that great session thank you so much for hosting us the grand team Thank you. Thank you all of you for joining in and folks if you have any questions reach out to these folks on their Twitter or LinkedIn channels and uh yeah. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining in. Enjoy.